Hello viewers, this is American Thinks, uh, here to do my first catch-up video for the Thousand Worlds Book Club being run by Preston Jacobs. This one is this Tower of Ashes, and uh, I should say from the get-go, uh, this it was an interesting story. Uh, don't get me wrong, this is an interesting story, but it's not exactly my favorite kind of story. Um, it has a lot of emotional overtones to it uh, and themes to it that I, I can't really relate to emotionally. Although, I will say I've had some very painful experiences in my life. Um, you know, I, I guess the way I've always approached it was that I'm just not going to give up, you know, and, and sit there and, and dwell on the pain. I'm going to figure out a way to move on and, and get on with my life. And um, I would say, you know, probably in that sense, my painful experiences have been more Firefly-esque rather than Tower of Ashes-esque, if you will. So, uh, for whatever reason, uh, I've been able to have that kind of attitude that, well, something bad just happened to me and, you know, I'm going to move on. So, um, you know, for better or for worse, that's been my attitude. Uh, and I guess the way I see it, everything I have in my life is essentially from refusing to quit. So, uh, that's just me. Um, George R. R. Martin uh, does write deep uh, emotionally conflicted and brooding characters very well and uh, but he doesn't have a lot of like say remote uh, emotionally resilient characters you know people that um, you know have these things happen to him and and they decide they're gonna you know try to power through it he, he doesn't really do that uh, I guess this is kind of my roundabout way of saying that George R. R. Martin is writing in his element here for uh, Tower of Ashes um, and though he does it well, I just don't personally relate. And and that's certainly not to knock um, other people who do relate. Uh, I understand different people process pain in different ways. Uh, I'm just saying this, you know, for me from the get-go. Because, you know, now I'm going to go on to my, you know, reactions here to the story. Um, for the story, um, I actually read it some time ago. Um, I was chasing a lead from the internet on whether uh, the titular Tower of Ashes could be similar to High Tower. Um, or at least meaning, you know, the, the base of High Tower that's like this strange uh, stone or so forth. Uh, uh, there's a, a few other, what is it? I think it's the Towers in E.T. Um, the ones that, you know, guard the eastern border, I think, are supposedly made of this similar uh, substance. Um, anyhow, if you, uh, of course, you know, if you haven't figured out for yourself already from reading the story, I think that idea is a bit of a stretch. Uh, to say the least, I don't really think that there's you know, something serious to chase there. Uh, anyways, but my first time reading the story, I think my first clue uh, that the subject matter was really going to be psychological in nature was when the narrative was describing Squirrel. And it says something like, you know, I didn't look up the exact quote, but it says something like Squirrel was proud of something or another. And just that wording seems strange to me since the rest of the story is pretty much told in the first person. And this little tidbit of information about Squirrel just seemed, it, it's, it's unusual. It's something the protagonist wouldn't know uh, from a true first-person perspective. So either George R. R. Martin was breaking perspective, or there's some kind of uh, telepathy going on. And, you know, of course, the first obvious answer was that Squirrel is a telepathic cat, like the ones that you know, we've come to be familiar with from the Thousand Worlds. And, he, and the story even goes on to suggest this until, you know... Of course, the end. So, who knows what's going on? But, anyways, um, upon the first read, I was very excited. You know, when we get into this subject matter, because I was expecting, or at least hoping, uh, that we get to explore uh, telepathy. And it seemed to me, at least for some time, that perhaps there was some kind of uh, telepathic uh, warfare or influence or what have you that was going on with the protagonist, uh, which would be very interesting, of course. Uh, for analysis uh, relating to A Song of Ice and Fire, since we could see how George R. R. Martin views telepathy and how it works when it's acting upon people uh, without their knowing, uh, per se. Um, and probably my first indication that this was, in fact, not the type of story um, was when uh, Crystal and Jerry show up. And I thought to myself, hmm, what are the odds that Crystal used to be Johnny's girlfriend? And then the story progressed, and no one else showed up, and, you know, I started concluding, yeah, well, this is probably going to end up being, you know, more of an introspective, you know, failed romance type of deal. And 
then the eight-legged squirrel shows up at the end and you know kind of pretty much ruins everything for me and not in the sense that it ruins it like to say the story didn't work but in the sense that you know i'm primarily reading this because i want to understand a song of ice and fire more and now this brings every event in the story basically into question and it makes it hard to come to any solid conclusions but anyhow um i do have a few thoughts uh, to offer on the story in the uh, context of a song of ice and fire um Thematically, I saw Johnny as being similar to Blood Raven, actually. And, of course, you know, he does have a bow, so, you know, kind of similar to uh, Blood Raven in that regard. But also because uh, Johnny used to be in human society, and then he went on to become a hermit in nature, uh, which follows the Blood Raven uh, plotline. And Blood Raven also had a love triangle with uh, Sierra Sea Star and Agor Rivers. And then there's the whole, you know, telepathy slash sorcery thing, which may or may not be applicable depending on what you believe actually happened in this story and what you believe actually happens in A Song of Ice and Fire. But anyway, several parallels that I saw there. Um, second is psychological. Uh, we aren't given enough information in this story to say with any surety uh, what really happened. And I think the first good takeaway uh, is to always question what POV characters are perceiving. And this is particularly true if the character is experiencing intense emotions. And particularly if that character is around anything that's knows to cause telepathic effects such as cats, uh, spiders, golden boys, fungus, weirwoods, etc. Um, and of course, if you know you have both of those things, if a character is experiencing intense emotions and they're around any of these, you know, telepathic causing things, then you know, doubly more so, you know, take everything that you're reading with a grain of salt. A uh, character's actions and motivation should always be suspect in these scenarios, is uh, what I'm getting at here. And uh, finally, uh, the three human characters in uh, Tower of Ashes. Uh, engaged in a bit of dialogue about anthropology kind of around the beginning of the story which I don't think really has a direct bearing on A Song of Ice and Fire per se but I do think it gives us a window into the types of things that George R. R. Martin thinks about when he's building worlds um, and it is a bit gratifying for somebody like myself uh, who reads A Song of Ice and Fire and sees little details and then uh, they bring these de details into question and say like, wait, why is this here? Why is that like that? And to see George R. R. Martin's own characters asking these same types of questions implies that George R. R. Martin himself thinks about these same things. And uh, now I think George R. R. Martin intentionally gives us insufficient information in his stories to come to irrefutable conclusions. Uh, hence why we go on the internet and bicker about it amongst ourselves. But I think he drops enough hints that we can guess at what the conclusions are if we look hard enough. And, you know, that's basically what we're doing here and why we're reading these stories. So, uh, again, uh, I, I, uh, I hesitate to call this a bad story. It just simply wasn't along uh, the lines of, you know, stories that I can typically relate to. Uh, it was interesting in its own way. And of course, if you're more into this subject matter, I think you'll uh, find that it's an interesting story. But if you have any more thoughts, any more takeaways, uh, be sure to share them. And uh, thank you guys for uh, those of you that do participate in the Thousand Worlds Book Club. It, uh, it's been an interesting experience for me so far. And I'm going to try to get to uh, the next one seven times, Never Kill Man, um, hopefully in the next couple of days. So stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. Cheers.